In the vibrant heart of Indonesia, Jakarta is facing a pressing issue. It's sinking at an alarming rate, around 12 centimeters every single year. But hold on to your hats, because there's a beacon of hope shining through. The Indonesian government is rolling up its sleeves to rescue its cherished capital from the threat of submersion. Introducing the Garuda Seawall, a monumental endeavor set to redefine coastal protection on a global scale. With a bold 40-year blueprint and an initial investment of a jaw-dropping 10.5 billion, this project promises to be a true marvel of engineering ingenuity. Join us on an exciting journey as we unveil Indonesia's ambitious plan to turn the tide on Jakarta's sinking fate. Curious about why Jakarta is sinking faster than any other megacity? Stay tuned for the fascinating answer. Firstly, Jakarta boasts a skyline peppered with towering skyscrapers, earning it the prestigious title of the city with the most shopping malls globally and ranking 12th in the world for its abundance of skyscrapers. However, the weight of these lofty structures exerts immense pressure on the underlying soil, contributing significantly to the city's sinking dilemma. Secondly, the region grapples with water scarcity, driving extensive groundwater extraction efforts that further exacerbate the landscape's instability. For decades, thousands, possibly millions, of deep wells have punctured Jakarta's ground in pursuit of water, exacerbating the city's subsidence. Lastly, Nestled on the northwest coast of the mighty Java Sea, Jakarta contends with rising water levels, with reports indicating an alarming surge of up to 200 centimeters annually. This relentless rise contributes to the city's perpetual battle against floods and tsunamis, wreaking havoc on lives and properties alike. The consequences are dire. Annual flooding already racks up damages totaling $133 million, a figure projected to skyrocket to a staggering $637 million in the coming years. While concerning, this pales in comparison to the looming threat facing the city. Speculations from experts paint a grim picture. By 2050, a third of Jakarta could be submerged if action isn't taken swiftly. The warning signs are stark, with certain areas witnessing land sinking into the sea by over 4 meters between 1997 and 2005 alone. With over 10 million souls calling Jakarta home, the urgency to address this crisis couldn't be more pressing. To tackle this monumental challenge, the Indonesian government devised several strategies. One bold move involves relocating the nation's capital from Java to Borneo, where a futuristic city dubbed Nusantara with a price tag of $34 billion, is set to rise. Additionally, groundwater extraction in Jakarta has been banned. However, perhaps the most ambitious plan yet is the proposal to erect a colossal seawall encircling the entire city. Yet, this visionary idea faced fierce opposition upon its inception in 2010. Environmental groups and local politicians voiced concerns, arguing that the seawall could disrupt livelihoods and harm marine ecosystems. The coalition Malay Dadi Seguro warned that rather than alleviating land sinking and coastal flooding, the project might exacerbate the plight of residents and the environment. Fishing grounds could shrink, imperiling the sustenance and incomes of those reliant on the sea. The proposal for the seawall has stirred concern about its potential impact on the coastal habitats and biodiversity, vital for both the environment and the well being of the populace. Despite initial opposition, the dire situation in Jakarta has spurred the revival of the Seawall Project. Indonesia's Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs underscored the urgency of the situation, citing alarming rates of land subsidence, up to 25 centimeters annually, attributed to rampant groundwater extraction and urban development. The necessity of the seawall to combat sinking land and recurrent flooding was emphasized. The project is envisioned in three phases stretching beyond 2040, with an initial investment of $10.5 billion for the first two stages. However, details regarding the financial requirements for the third phase were not disclosed. The Garuda Seawall, spanning 25 miles with an imposing height of 80 feet, will be strategically situated along the northern bay of Jakarta, flanking its east and west shores. In a bid to attract private investment, the Seawall will double as a hub for urban development encompassing an array of amenities such as an airport, harbor, toll road, 
residential and industrial zones, waste treatment facilities, water reservoirs, and green spaces, all within a sprawling 4,000 hectare area. Additionally, 17 artificial islands will be created, forming an entirely new district of Jakarta expected to accommodate 2 million inhabitants upon completion. With a deadline looming for the completion of both ends of the seawall by 2040, another significant project is already underway along the coast of Jakarta, a 30-kilometer-long river and beach dike, slated for completion by 2030. This initiative, initiated in October 2014, aims to extend and fortify the existing dike, which succumbed to the devastating Jakarta flood of 2007. To ensure the comprehensive completion of the entire project by 2050, plans are in place to construct a freshwater reservoir within the Garuda seawall. This reservoir aims to tackle Jakarta's water supply woes, currently reliant on groundwater extraction. By storing rainwater and river water from the city's 13 waterways, the reservoir will provide a sustainable source of clean water for Jakarta's residents. However, the pressing question remains. How will the Indonesian government secure the $10.5 billion required for this colossal undertaking? The answer lies in strategic private participation, as the government acknowledges its limitations in funding the project independently. Coordinating Minister of Economic Affairs, Erlanga Hartarto, revealed that numerous investors are keen to contribute to the project's construction. Utilizing a public-private partnership scheme, the government aims to leverage these partnerships to realize its ambitious vision. Hartardo further noted that construction of the seawall project had already commenced, albeit in a disjointed manner, prior to integration. The genesis of the giant seawall project traces back to the groundbreaking ceremony held in October 2014, marking the commencement of the National Capital Integrated Coastal Development, NCICD, Master Plan, also known as Garuda. Notably, the Dutch and South Korean governments have played a significant role in Garuda, pledging a combined total of $19,000 for feasibility studies pertaining to the second and third phases of the Garuda seawall. However, amidst the enthusiasm surrounding Garuda, skeptics and critics raise a poignant question. Could the seawall exacerbate Jakarta's sinking conundrum? Concerns abound that the expansive seawall might impede the natural flow of the city's 13 rivers, effectively transforming Jakarta Bay into a cesspool of sewage. Furthermore, detractors argue that by failing to address the root causes of land subsidence, the megaproject could inadvertently hasten the city's descent into the depths. Echoing these sentiments, a sea and coastal campaign manager at the Indonesia Environmental Forum suggests an alternative approach. Rather than relying solely on the seawall, Emphasis should be placed on revitalizing coastal areas through initiatives such as mangrove reforestation and restoring riverbanks to their natural state, free from encroaching housing developments. In response to these apprehensions, assurances have been provided that extensive ecological studies have been conducted to mitigate potential disruptions to the ecosystem. Yet, the debate rages on, underscoring the complexities inherent in balancing urban development with environmental preservation. In response to critics, Erlanga Hartarto reassured, Environmental concerns have been given utmost priority. Furthermore, the giant seawall incorporates openings to facilitate water flow, ensuring minimal disruption to ecosystems such as mangroves and marine life. He underscored that the task force overseeing the seawall's construction had been meticulously deliberated within the economic ministry emphasizing the imperative for collaborative efforts to combat land subsidence. Additionally, Indonesia's Marine Affairs and Fisheries Ministry pledged to oversee the spatial planning process for the seawall along the northern coast of Java, further underscoring the government's commitment to environmental stewardship. Despite facing staunch criticism, particularly from segments of the Indonesian populace skeptical of the project's efficacy, the Garuda giant seawall represents a significant stride forward. With Jakarta's sinking crisis escalating, the government cannot afford complacency. If the seawall offers a viable solution to safeguard the city, then it warrants serious consideration and support. Beyond the pragmatic considerations surrounding the Garuda giant seawall project, its significance transcends mere infrastructure. 
It symbolizes Indonesia's resilience in the face of environmental adversity and its determination to protect its citizens and cultural heritage. Moreover, the project serves as a beacon of hope, showcasing the power of collaboration between nations and government agencies in tackling complex challenges. By integrating environmental sustainability into urban development initiatives, Indonesia sets a precedent for responsible governance and stewardship of natural resources. Furthermore, the Garuda Seawall Project underscores the interconnectedness of global issues such as climate change and urbanization. As coastal cities worldwide grapple with rising sea levels and land subsidence, Jakarta's innovative approach offers valuable lessons and insights for other vulnerable regions. Ultimately, the success of the Garuda Giant Seawall hinges not only on its technical feasibility, but also on its ability to foster inclusive growth and environmental resilience. As Indonesia navigates the complexities of modernization and environmental conservation, the Seawall stands as a testament to the nation's commitment to forging a sustainable future for generations to come. What do you think about this massive mega-project? Leave a comment down below.